Addition is commutative. It doesn't matter which order I write those things. So I could do sigma z uh, plus mu or mu plus sigma z. It doesn't really matter. Equals on the right side, I'm just left with my x. And that really, in which I'm going to rewrite over here so you can actually see, <coughs> is the way we can translate a z-score into a data value. I'm going to rewrite it just slightly. I'm going to write the x on the left-hand side. I'm going to write the mu plus either sigma z or z sigma. It really doesn't matter. So I'm going to write z times sigma just to switch it up a little bit. Multiplication, just like addition, is commutative. So on the, on the left-hand side, I had mu plus sigma z. So here, I'm just switching the sides here. I have mu plus sigma z, or z sigma. Raise your hand if you were able to follow down that, that algebra. Good. Well, now what this lets you do is, now I have a z-score, and you give me an x. It's kind of nice. Would you like to try an example to see how this thing works out? OK. Same steps, really. We're going to do a sketch, only this time we're working a little bit backwards. We're going to draw a picture here, uh, identifying the top or the bottom, whatever percent that I'm giving you. You'll use that to find the z-score. You'll use that z-score to translate that into a data value. So steps, again, are picture, find a z-score, use that to solve for x. Use our um, our weight example again. The the weight of those. Remember those men that we calculated? Well, we didn't calculate them. I gave you the men's weights. The mean and the standard deviation from our, our example from yesterday, Monday. The mean weight was. Well, I give you 170. 172 pounds. With a standard deviation of 29 pounds. <coughs> So this is that weight example. Here's how your questions are going to be worded. To go backwards and actually find a data value, one way you can see this is what data value separates the lightest in this case, lightest, or shortest, or smallest, or least, from, gra from greatest. So in our case, I'm going to ask it, what weight separates the lightest 99.5% from the heaviest 0.5%? the empirical rule because uh, we're, we're talking about everything to the left of a certain point, not between standard deviations here. Is that heaviest? Yeah. Okay. What weight separates the lightest 99.5% of people from the heaviest 0.5% of, of men? Notice how I said weight. I didn't say I'm really looking for an area. I'm giving you an area. I'm not looking for a z-score. I don't just want the z-score. I want the actual weight value. Do you see the difference in the problem? Before, when we did this with the thermometers, a very similar example, I said, what's the top 10% or what was between this, this percentage? And you gave me z-scores. And coincidentally, those z-scores were the actual thermometer readings because the mean was 0 and standard deviation was 1. That was awesome. Here, we don't have that case. We're able to do just slightly more work. Same basic idea on setup, though. Same basic idea. We're still going to draw a picture. Remember all that stuff about finding the top 10%, bottom 30%, and so on and so forth? I said you had to be pretty good at that. Let's see how good you are, because this is where we need to use that stuff. What's the lightest 99% mean? 
I need you to understand where the lightest 50% is and move from there. So when you're, when you're faced with this type of problem, identify at least the, the smallest or lightest 50% or top or bottom 50% and then work from that point. So you tell me, where's the lightest 50%? Is it here or here? This is a number line, right? This is our, our weights on a number line. So the lightest 50% would not be over here. This would be the heaviest 50%, and this would be the lightest 50%. Are you with me? Okay. Now, we want the lightest 99.5%. Where's the lightest 99.5? This, this is the lightest 50%. This would be like the lightest 40%, right? This would be like the lightest 10%. You with me still? This would be like the lightest 60%. Where do I need to put my line for the lightest 99.5%? You stop me when I'm there. <coughs> no? Okay, so we're way over here. I'm going to erase that. That was our 50% mark. Would you guys agree that this is the lightest 99.5%? and this would be the heaviest 0.5%. Notice how those things are working together, right? Let's translate the percents now into a decimal. How, what's 99.5% as a decimal, please? This represents 0.995 as a proportion of the area. Okay, be careful. What is this? 0.5% as a decimal. 2-0? I put zero point so you can see the point, but zero point, zero, zero, five. Are you with me so far? Yeah. Okay, now. We have now, what, what is this? Is this a z-score or an area? Area. That's an area. So what we're looking for is the z-score now that represents 99.5% that's below it and point five percent is above it, or point nine nine five is below that to the left of it, and point zero zero five is above that. Can you go ahead and find a <coughs> z-score that represents this information? Yes. You could use your table for that, right? You could also use inverse norm on your calculator for that. My question is, on your calculator or table, what should you be looking up? Should you be looking up 0 .005 or should you be looking up 0 .995 and why? 0 .995, very good, and why? Okay, so the table along with your calculator will only give you z-scores if you plug in the area to the left. So I'm, I, no matter what I give you, you are going to translate it so that you know what this area is and that's what you are looking up. Are you clear on this? Okay, so go ahead and do that now. I'll give you a few seconds. Look at your table, look at point nine nine five, or inverse normal on your calculator, point nine nine five either way because that's the area to the left and that is going to give you, say that again, 2.58? Anybody else get 2.58? How about someone on the, the table, did you get it? 2.575. 2.575. Okay, which rounds to 2.58. On your calculator, what did it give you exactly? Like 2.57582. Yeah. Okay. I didn't remember any of that, actually. <laughs> I'm just going to say... Thank you. 2. Point, let's use the, uh, the table. 5, 7... You said 5? Yeah. 2.575. Is it one of those little dot things? Yeah. Yeah, it should be. It should be a special little dot thing. The asterisk that you follow down, were you able to follow that down? Should give you that number. Yes, no? Okay. So, 2. Point, what is this? What is that? Is that a pound or is that a z score? So, you, you can't say this, right? 99.5% of men weigh less than 2.575 pounds then I am extraordinarily heavy. So I weigh 173 pounds. If you leave this as your answer, do you have it right? No. I'm looking for the weight, right? If you put 2.575, what you've given me is a z-score. What you need to do is use the information and translate that into a weight. First question, how many people feel okay with drawing the picture just like that? Just the picture. Okay, if you're not raising your hand, I'm going to assume that you don't get it. How many people feel okay with drawing the picture? Picture? Okay, good. How about looking up the z-score from the picture? 
Good. Now, lastly, since we have our z-score, we now have this information. Let's see if we know what all this information is. Uh, do you know what the x value is? No. That's what we're trying to find. That's a weight. Do you know what the mu is? <coughs> How much is that? Do you know what the z is? 29. That's what we just spent all this time finding. 2.57. Do you know what the sigma is? Yes. 49. That's 29. I want you to plug the information into that formula and find out the x formula, okay? Let's see, mu was 172, that's a pound, plus z is 2.575, that has no units to it, times standard deviation was 29, that's a pound, so we're going to be adding pounds plus pounds, so the units actually do work. Order operations say you multiply, then you add. So you're taking 172, you all understood where that came from, right? That's our mean. 2.575, that's what you spent so much time finding, so you have to be able to do this. That's why I taught it to you last section. In order to do this, you have to be able to draw this picture correctly. Otherwise, if you actually looked up this, 0 0.005, you'd get negative 2.575. That would not give you the correct thing. Times 29, which is given to you. Have you done the work yet? How much is your x? 246 what? 0.675. 675. What is that? What's the units for that? Um, That's pounds. What's interpretation? I want you to think on it. Don't say it loud. Just think of the interpretation, what we just did, okay? What we just did of course is to make a picture representing 99.5% of the data below some value. That translated to a z-score. Then we use our formula to make a z-score into an x value, a data value. So what does this number represent? You tell me. I mean, it can't just be, oh, I found a number. The uh, that separates the lightest from the heaviest. Okay, how much? How much? What, what percentage of people is less than this weight? Is less than that weight. What percentage of people is less than that weight? Uh -huh. So this is your upper bound for 99.5% of the male population according to this information. Do you understand the interpretation of that? This class is all about interpretation. Before it was pretty easy. You just calculate the mean, you give the mean, that's it. You calculate the standard deviation, standard deviation, that's it. Now we're using it. I mean, you can't just be calculating Z's and going, I'm done. The answer is 245. All those questions that a lot of you leave blank, the part B and C on your homework. Where you go A, B, and then C is interpretation, you go, and you skip it, right? <laughs> That's the whole point of the class, is part C. That's it. This stuff is easy. You're all required to get this, this stuff right. The next part is the interpretation. That's the important stuff. This is a bunch of BS if you don't know how to interpret it. It's pointless. It's absolutely pointless. You've got to make the next step and know that this represents the upper bound for 99.5% of the male population as far as weight goes. So you'd say, oh, well, if I'm making a car, I want the seat to hold up to people who weigh at least 246 pounds. Because I want to, I want to support 99.5% of my male population who's going to be driving that sports car or whatever, whatever car you have. Right? Do you need it upwards of supporting 500 pounds? No, because that's you're never going to get 100% of the population. But 99.5—that's a pretty good range. You with me on that? That's how you.